Hey folks, my name is Dave. Welcome to the shop here at NTD Racing. And behind me is Lefty, which is our budget trophy truck. We've been building and we're working on the chassis. In the last couple of videos, you see me make the cab in Bentec. You see me make the front of the chassis. And then today is all about making the rear of the, uh, the, the truck and how we're gonna integrate things like the fuel tank, the spare tires, and locate the suspension and all those kinds of things. I'm gonna use some really cool resources. Not only are we gonna use Bentec software, but we're also going to go to some resources that you find on the Crawlpedia website. All those are linked in the description below, as well as all the links for everything that we've been using in this entire build series for the, uh, the truck. So some really cool stuff. And what we're doing is, is we're trying to work to a point where we're going to take all the files. We're going to Bentec and we're going to cut everything out at once. A little bit of pressure there because I think there's going to be about 100 individual tubes that we're going to cut out. And you can imagine how much steel that is that we're gonna hope just all works at one time and you'll get a chance to see that real time as we take some video uh, of that. Anyway, there's a lot to get to. I'm gonna ask you to hit the like and subscribe and more importantly is leave a comment below. Realize that uh, I find that there's a lot of comments that guys use who are smarter than I am at this whole thing and I sure appreciate that. I read them all, I take all your advice. So thank you for that and let's go ahead and get to this build. Let's get started on this thing. Okay, we here is where we basically left off on the last video. So video number one, we made the roll cage and then we did all the pick points for basically the roll cage area. Video two, we made the area that's gonna contain the engine and the front suspension. And if you, where I left off last time, I'm st and I'm still messing with it right now, as you can see, I've changed the dimensions, a little bit of this up front. I think it looks better. I think it's, it basically gets me closer to holding the front of the hood and all that and being able to create a geometry to do that. It gives me more room in here for, for the steering, also for my air cleaner and potentially even a transmission cooler. Uh, I could flip the air cooler around on an LS engine. You can just turn your intake manifold around and pull it off the backside. So all those things I'm, I might be considering later. Uh, again, this is my second truck, so I am still learning on, on this one. So the goals of this video are to complete the rear part of the, the roll cage. So all the stuff in the back, you know, the big things that we're going to be doing the, on this video is, uh, is obviously making a chassis that will basically locate the rear axle and then make sure I have mounting points for shocks and all that kind of stuff or mounting geometry that will allow shocks. Um, also in that with locating the rear axle, that whole structure is going to dictate the ride height at full bump. And it's going to have to have, uh, just the ability to put bump stops on there also. And we'll get to that. That'd be just a little bit of math and preparation and all that kind of stuff. One of the big things I have to do is, you know, all there's some things like an engine that have to go in there. Well, we got to put a big fuel tank in there. We're putting that app behind the axle. So one of the first things we'll do is we'll hop into Fusion 360 and work on the axle and then figure out kind of where we might put the spare tires. We might not actually build the stuff to make put the spare tires in right now, but at least just have a good idea of where those things will be. So first of all, let's start with, you know, just some of the stuff. And I am by no means, and I never, I think, claim to be the pro on this stuff. And so let me just show you where I get the information. You saw on my last video where I use the racing aspirations uh, geometry calculator. And again, the information for this is all in the description below on this video. And there's a discount. If you click on that, I get nothing from it. These guys are just really cool and offered up a discount. I think they're somewhere in Europe. But uh, I think it's really cool. You can basically make any geometry for a suspension that you want for the front suspension and then get a good idea of how it's going to work out. And this saves you a whole bunch of time as you can kind of move around some geometries. For the back, I'm using some different resources. And I go to this page, and it's called Crawlpedia. Again, a link in the bottom. And I think that this page is probably run by these guys over here at Filthy Motorsports because whoever does it is brilliant. Um, I, you know, so if you are, I think these guys are in the Boulder area and you're shop, shopping for something, go see Filthy Motorsports. You know, they, people who put together products and videos like this guy does uh, are, are just outstanding. And they're so generous with their information because the stuff that they provide is, I mean, basically, I don't know how I would build a truck without, you know, people sharing this information. And so I'm sharing it with you and hopefully making it a one-stop shop. And so today what we're, you know, I'm actually not going to go into it because I I've did this on my last truck and I'm just going to modify some of the numbers. I'm just showing you where I get the information and I will probably, you know, just, just tweak the numbers a little bit and make sure all the values are good for this one. But 
here's what kind of what we're looking at. They have on their page, they talk all about this thing called anti-squat. And you know, what does anti-squat mean? They, they explain, explain exactly what anti-squat is and then tell you what values you should be shooting for. I'm going for a high speed desert race vehicle and I should be shooting for 10 to 50% anti-squat. I would never have known that uh, or known what it was and they, they provide it all here. And then even better, is they have a calculator and that calculator downloads an Excel file. And this is Honcho's suspension. Um, and as you can see up here, it had an anti-squat value at this height right here of about 60. And what's really cool about this is you put in the values for, you know, what you think you've got on, in your car and all that kind of stuff. You calculate those out. You can change these values over here to manipulate, change the, you know, the, locations of the your trailing arms uh, for the suspension and then when you go over to the travel you can actually go and you can move the suspension and see you know inch by inch and see how the values started and how how they're changing through there you can see what's going to happen to your pinion angle and those kinds of things and how it's going to change and figure out you know am i going to run into problems as i run the suspension through full bump to full droop uh, really cool stuff there and a great resource. So that being said, we've already done this and I've got some numbers we will put in a little bit later on, but what we need to do first is hop into Fusion, Fusion 360 and get ourselves some pick points that we can use to build basically the rear of the chassis and, uh, and clear some bump stops. Let's get to that. Let's go back. So we're back here on Bentec and, uh, you might be saying, man, you know what? That looks just a little bit different than it looked like a couple of minutes ago. Well, you know, in real time, uh, things have changed. I got to make some, just some changes and to accommodate a seat and all that and shocks in the back. I've changed the geometry here. This will also, and I'll show you later my plan for fabrication and how I'm going to do that and lay everything out. So that'll come out later on why I did that. And also maybe moving the steering wheel a little bit further forward and how the dash is going to lay out and everything like that. So I made some changes. I'll be making some changes all along here. But uh, anyway, look, here's the here's the goods. We're going to take this now and drop this into Fusion 360. I will say export it and export it as a step file. And I've already saved it on there, so I'm not going to show you that one again. But I save the file. I go over to Fusion 360. And then now I'm going to go over to open. Uh, open. And I'm gonna say open from my computer. I'm gonna find that step file that I have on there. And then now my, that's, that thing is inside of Fusion 360. And so I can manipulate it. And I'm one of those guys who I, I, I don't even trust myself doing simple math in my head. When it gets down to critical numbers, you know, big numbers, I, I will just go to the calculator. And I'm gonna kind of do the same thing here with this is I'm gonna show you how I basically use Fusion 360 to flesh out some numbers so I don't miss anything. Uh, hopefully I don't miss anything. Uh, anyway, so I want to figure out exactly where the bump stops are going to land in the rear and the, the whole cage and all that kind of stuff. So it looks right. Uh, and I'm going to show you how I figure out those numbers and how I flush those out of here. Anyway, I'm going to start sketching on this thing. And it's not a sketch I'm going to cut or anything. I'm just using it to, as a my calculator, basically, if you will. I'm gonna hit the hotkey L to pull up my line. I'm gonna grab this point. Remember, this is the zero point we've been using for mostly everything. This thing's gonna have, you know what, I gotta go over here to document settings. I could probably set this up to where it comes on a default every time. I'm not sure how to do that. I'll figure it out later. Anyway, so I set it up to, uh, to inches, hotkey L. I'm gonna grab this point, and then now from that point, the rear axle is gonna be located 110 inches back from there or 128 inches back from the front tire. So I'm gonna hit enter on that. So that is where the rear axle is gonna fall in space there. Now, I know that the top of this tube is where the body rests. And just how I'm doing the design right now, this is located 19 inches above my floor, which I'm measuring things off of, which puts this at 18 inches above the floor. So if I come over here and I just say hotkey L again, and I say at 18 inches, and then there is the floor uh, of this ride. Now I'm using 40 inch tires. I'm gonna go hotkey L again. I'm gonna go up to 20 inches here, because that's gonna be the center of the axle for this thing. And then hotkey C, and then here is the width of my axle. It's a four inch, the 14 bolt has a, the tube that comes out of the four, is a four inch tube. Now I will have another quarter inch plate on here where I have the, the bump stop, you know, give it a landing plate or something like that. I'm not gonna really calculate for that right now. Um, I'll just kind of 
yeah, that, it's going to be close enough. Uh, I don't want to miss it by a bunch of inches, but if I miss it by a quarter of an inch, I'm fine uh, with that because I'll be moving the bump stop around just a little bit. So let's talk about, you know, when the suspension goes through its travel and it goes up and down, as that thing goes up, obviously the frame gets the gets closer to the ground. How close do I want that? I would say, you know, probably six inches is I want to be able to like go full bump and have, clear a rock by six inches. But I'm going to calculate for four and give myself a little bit of room there to, to adjust the design a little bit. I can, it's like one of those things I can always give myself uh, less travel. I can't give myself more travel by the geometry. So I'm going to set it up to give myself four. So I'm going to go over here and hotkey L it. And from this corner, I'm going to come down four inches. And then I'm going to hotkey L again. I'm going to come all the way across and just give myself, this is like the lowest this thing's allowed to go. Um, there we go and enter and then there. So now I know if I go, so if I go from here and I say, again, this is like, you're like, this is simple math you could be doing in your head. I'm going to escape out of that. I'm not sure I just did. I hit hotkey E and I, it didn't like it. That would tell it to extrude. I don't want to extrude. Um, hotkey L again. Now, if I go from here, oh, I'm going to say escape. Hotkey L, make sure it stamps the point I want it there. And I come all the way down. So it's in the way that I have everything set up here, um, what it's telling me is that I have 12 inches of up travel from where it's at right now, um, which just the way it's set up right now, the suspension might actually be, you know, set up at a zero point somewhere different, but just the way it's drawn right now, it'll be 12 inches in the up travel. I got a feeling I'll probably be shooting from like 16 that the, I'll raise the body up just by setting the shocks and those kinds of things. But so hotkey L from there. And if I go up 12 inches, that is where the top, uh, oh, I just, I think I just put the wrong number in there, hotkey L. And I want to be from here because the, where is the top of the axle going to be when the suspension is at its full travel? It's going to be right there. So once that thing goes all the way, and it's going to swing in an arc, but eh, close. Um, that's about where it will be. Um, is right there. So that is where I have, that's going to be the lowest point of this structure, which separates the on the left side in the picture is going to be where the fuel tank is. On the right side is all the rest of the structure holds the shocks and everything. And in the center here where this point is, is where the bump stop is going to be. So that's going to be 12 inches. Now the truck, the, the fiberglass body, and just, you know, to make it look kind of, I guess, right. The fiberglass body for reference, uh, is going to be at 57 inches from the ground, the way it sits right now. So 57 is right there. And I really don't want the structure to sit much above. I don't want to, all, you know, this thing to look like it's not designed in, with the body in mind. And, and I think we're going to have enough structure in here because realize that as I'm making this design, there's kind of balances between, you know, what looks good and then also uh, structure. And I want to think structure, if I, especially in this bending, this moment here where it's going to be, you know, essentially a simply supported beam where you're supported on one side, but you're kind of hanging out in space on the other with a load. Um, the, the further these two points are apart, when I build this structure, the stronger it will be. Uh, so if I hit hotkey L now, and now I know that from there to right of beam, that point is 23 inches. So I, I kind of have the numbers now I need to make my pick points for this thing. Uh, so now I know it's going to be that this point right here, and I escape out of that, that this point right here is if I come over here and hit hotkey L and I go from here all the way down to that zero line there that, then I know it's 16 inches. So from that datum line, I got to go back 110 inches. I go up. 16 inches and then now I can go left and right to build the rest of the, the cage and then from that point I just say just go towards the ceiling or up 23 inches and now I have the back of the cage let's take those numbers now let's go back over to uh, Bentec and put them in there all right so back in Bentec let's put those numbers in there let's get the pick points we're going to go off of this point right inside here that data point we're using and it's going to be a single pick points. Make sure I still get that point selected. There we go. And I'm going to go back 110. I'm going to go towards the ceiling. 
16. Uh, I'm going to clear all the values again. Got to make sure you clear the values. Ceiling 16. And there's that point there. I'm going to apply that. And then from there, I'm going to clear the values. And then from this point, I'm just going to the ceiling 23 inches like we planned. I'm going to apply that. So there are those pick points. Now I need to just make that whole structure the width. And what I'm doing is I'm designing this around my fuel tank in the back. And I'll show you what the fuel tank looks like here in a second. But I'm going to go back to pick points, single pick points, clear all the values. And the width is going to be 35 or you know 17.5 each direction so i'm going to go from this point i'm going to say 17.5 that way i'm going to apply it i'm going to go left and apply it do the same thing for this one left and right and apply and now i got all of those pick points and you kind of get an idea of what that looks like now um and then what we're going to do is we're going to put some some tubes in here some two inch dom tubes i'll put those in how they're going to be laid out and remember that the rear axle has got to clear the pumpkin and also part of that four link suspension so it's going to look something more like this uh, in the back and then we're going to the the roll cage to uh, for this and that's going to come over here And I get an idea of what this thing kind of looks like now. Like all those points in there. This is how the rear of the roll cage will kind of look like. Um, I will still probably have tubes coming off. And I'll kind of show you what those look like. Um, right here, I'll go from the center down to this one. And this one down to that one. And there are, that's pretty much what the cage is looking like. Now some things that I will be concerning myself with. And I'll kind of show you later on here in fusion 360 how i'm going to basically confirm that i have clearance for everything is i'm looking down on top of here and realize that the off of this tube back here is where my trailing arm or trailing arms are going to come off of and the shocks are going to basically mount towards you know off of this tube and another two i will mate into here and I need to make sure that those shocks are going to clear these tubes on the side. And so we will show you that here in a little bit in Fusion 360. Let's go ahead now, however. And now that we've got that part of the, or the roll cage basically designed, let's go ahead and figure out how we're going to put this fuel tank on the back of Lefty. Well, you've already seen how I use Fusion 360 to kind of flush out some of the numbers as a calculator. And I'm doing the same thing here for the fuel tank. So what I did is we are using a 60 gallon fuel safe uh, fuel tank that we bought from CarTech. Again, I think the best deals you're gonna find on this type of stuff is from CarTech. They give you great discounts and stuff. Um, talk to Tyler when you go over there. Anyway, so what I did is I mocked up this fuel tank and this is the fuel safe. This is kind of the bottom, uh, the top, and there's like the filler is sitting right here on the fuel tank where you get the three inch filler and then you got the lines going to your fuel pump and all those kinds of things. And the way that I was originally looking at it and the way that we run Honcho is that the front of the truck is over here and that this would be the rear of the truck. And as I was, you know, I was trying to figure out how am I going to mount this thing in Lefty uh, doing the same kind of thing. And one of the problems that we had with Lefty is, or I'm sorry, with Honcho, and one of the things I was always worried about is this is the furthest back part of the truck. And if you were to tow, you know, <laughs> pull it out all the time and we get stuck. And if you were to put a, a tow rope on here and pull it off angle, you could potentially, it wasn't really triangulated well. You could you could basically shift the whole thing, you bend the whole back of the truck and it wouldn't be too difficult. So I wanted to be able to triangulate the rear of this cage for the times we got to either pull somebody else out or we could be pulled out uh, or something like that. So. What I found is that if I just, and this is crazy, but I'm going to turn the fuel tank around, basically run it backwards the way I was running it from left. So our honcho. So now this is going to be the front and this is going to be the back. And uh, what, so what I need to do is this is that 
uh, where the bump stop is going to be mocked right here. It needs to, the fuel tank needs to be seven and a half inches back to clear the pumpkin as it kind of moves up and down because it will move obviously, you know, pretty darn close to this thing. It's going to be all the way up here. We don't want it to hit the fuel tank. So seven and a half inches is what I needed to back basically from the center line of my, um, center line of the axle. So this is pretty close to that. This actually gives me eight and a half inches. Uh, so, and then I'm going to basically, now I'm going to bring these tubes as, a, as opposed to coming straight back. I'm dropping them back. Cause another thing is I was kind of tinkering with this. And if I had spun this thing around the opposite direction with this being the front, it put the fuel tank really high. I mean, like it was really sitting up there pretty high and this is weight uh, and it doesn't need to be that high. This kind of brings it down almost in line with the engine. Uh, we still have like departure angle issues, which I think that this will not be a factor for. We're thinking about that. And you'll see that as we kind of put it all together. So what I basically get from that is that we're going to go ahead and make a pick point, And it's going to be from here. It's going to go down at a 13 degree angle. So it falls the slope and it's going to come out. I have it at 38 inches, what I, I calculated. And then from here, we're going to the ceiling uh, 26 inches. And then we'll put that whole thing together and you'll see how this thing goes back together. So we'll go back over to Bentech. Uh, and it's time to make more pick points. We'll go pick points and we're going to go angles and I'm going to the rear. This is the direction I want that the plane. I want this angle to be a player at. So there it is right there. Uh, negative 13 degrees and back 38 inches. I'm going from this point right here. I'm going to hit apply. And then I'm going to go from that point right there and hit apply. And I got both of those pick points on there. Now I'm going to go get single pick points, clear all my values. I'm going towards the ceiling. I think I said 26 inches towards the ceiling off of this point and apply. And then off of that point, apply. And then now you're going to kind of see how this whole thing's going to go together. I probably will do at least for the outside of this in two inch DOM. This is going to be like some heavy stuff out over here. You got 60 gallons of fuel and you got two 40 inch tires are gonna be hanging off of this structure now i think it's gonna be pretty robust i'm not too worried about it but um it's gonna look something like this oh, escape oh I'll, I'll close it there i'll say control z i don't want that line um now i'm gonna go and get some one or one and a half inch dom for this and straight lines go there and this is where i was talking about on the back of the truck where i wanted to be able to triangulate this thing so that when you tied something right here it's basically working against a triangle uh, as best as i can make that happen so there we go and then now there that is what the back of the truck is probably going to look something like that and then we'll We'll go ahead and let's go ahead and drop this into Fusion 360. You can kind of see how the fuel tank will fit in there. And uh, and then we'll be able to kind of make sure our dimensions are good, a little bit of validation for that. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to go export this thing again as a step file. I'm just going to give it the same name that I had before. I'm going to go back to my lefty folder, wherever that is. Step files, I'm going to name it the same thing. Yes, I want to replace that. I'm going to go over to Fusion 360. I'm going to get rid of, actually, I'm just open up another window. As long as I don't save that one, Fusion 360 in the free form, you have this number over here that is the number of editable documents you're allowed to have. You have to keep them below 10 unless you're paying. And uh, so anyway, um, if I don't save it, it doesn't create become editable. But I'm going to open this one. And since I'm going to import some stuff, on this one, I will have to, like I'm basically gonna bring over the fuel tank so I can see how that fits in there. I'm gonna go ahead, there. There's that, let's go find the 60 gallon fuel tank. I need to save first, file, save. Sure, sounds good, I'll save it as that. And now that it's saved, I should be able to, once it's all settled down, drag and drop this thing over here. There we go. We've got the fuel tank is in there now, and now I can move it around. So I'm going to bring it over back here towards the back, and it takes a little bit of time to in in space figure out how to to maneuver this thing. So I got to figure out which way it's oriented. 
So that part has got to go down. So I'm going to be over here. I'm going to look at it from the back. And I want to rotate this 90 degrees that way. And I want to move it basically as close as I can get it in this, into its spot. Move it forward. And that's how it'll look in there. There we go. That's where the fuel tank will go. All right. So once I got that in there, uh, I'm happy with the position of the fuel tank. I'll hit okay. And it just, it'll just leave it in there for right now. Now I you can kind of see where that thing is going to sit. Okay. So now let's throw some tires in there to see how that's going to look and make sure that, you know, all the clearances are kind of making sense to us. Um, so we know that the tires and be this, this front wheel is going to be about 20 inches off the ground. This is 18, 20 is a little bit higher than that. And again, I'll probably readjust the suspension geometry a little bit uh, for this. That's going to be 40 inches on that tire. I'm going to hit hotkey E to extrude this thing. Extrude that. There we go. And it, the tire is about 14 inches wide. Remember, anytime you do an extrusion before you hit the enter key, you got to come over here and see what process it's going to do. It's saying it's, the operation is going to be a cut. I want to make a new body. Otherwise, it'll be all, you won't be able to move it around. It'd be frustrating. So... Um, now the tire is right there and it's located, it looks like right in the center, which is exactly where I want it. Cause now I'm going to say hotkey M again, I'm going to pick the tire and I want to move it this way. And it's got to go negative 45 because remember outside to outside, it's going to be 90 inches on this thing. So now that tire is located in pretty much the correct direction. Now I want to make another tire for the back. So I'm going to hit hotkey M. I don't want the face, I want a body. I'm going to select that. I'm going to say make a copy. And I'm going to move that tire back. And I want it to go back 128 inches. And then boom, there's a tire in the back. And then you can kind of scroll, look at the top, and just kind of see some of the clearances. Make sure that the shock isn't going to come up and hit one of the suspension, you know, one of your tubes or something like that. Uh, in there. So that's all looking uh, pretty good. The other thing we want to do is now that we got you know, we figured out everything's going to fit in there for the most part is we want to make sure that, you know, figure out kind of where we're going to put this spare tire. So I'm going to hit hockey M again, and I'm going to grab that and make a copy. And I'm going to figure out kind of where the spare is going to go. You know, it's probably going to go somewhere like in here. If you kind of look at this tube right here, I got a feeling it's going to it'll probably rest and use that tube will be extended out. Uh, but we got to make sure it's going to clear this tire. So I'm going to leave that tire there. Now remember that we said that this one, the max it would see, hotkey M body again, uh, the max that it would see is it would go up 12 inches. And if that's the case, you know, there's no way to put that tire, this tire over here anywhere, this one, with as close as I put it you know, to the, this, it's still gonna, basically strike that tire. So this is kind of gives you an opportunity to, to check out how that thing's going to fit in there. And what you can see is I will have to basically move this tire now back a little bit. And you can kind of, and I can kind of just take a good look at what dimensions I might be able to use later on to kind of grab that tire. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of build a structure out here. One that goes right to the end of the fiberglass. So it looks, no, it won't look funky or anything like that. And then what I will also be able to use is when I do that, it'll, it won't will make this a huge face in the back. And I will also be able to put tool storage here and probably our jack and that kind of thing. So I think it'll be pretty tricky. It'll actually be a pretty nice design. I got some space to use back there. So with all that in mind, let's go back for the last time to the uh, chassis we're designing in Bentec. And then we'll, as you see, I have put all this stuff in here. Let me show you some of the changes that I've made. And then we're going to go put that back in Fusion 360. We're going to assemble it with tires and fuel tanks and all those kinds of things. And we will confirm what we think are the dimensions that hopefully we'll have to change later on. So anyway, uh, first let's go with just the rear suspension. We talked about the mounting locations. And what I did is I put these, uh, I guess, square tubes in here right now. These are about three and a half inch by three and a half inch. And what they represent is the width of the spacers, that, which are going to go on the uniball plus quarter inch plates on each side for the mounting. So those will go in there. And what I will be able to do when I do the manufacturing or get ready to 
get uh, all the tubes ready to cut is it'll give me fish mouths and it'll kind of it'll let, let those tubes terminate. And then I will erase these because obviously we won't be cutting those on the dragon or anything like that. But uh, I just needed to use that so that I get these coped ends of, um, of these tubes. So that's where that's gonna land. And then the other part is we'll go ahead and let's take a look at the rear of the car and how this is gonna look. So here is kind of the cradles that you see. You got the fuel tank here, you got two cradles for the tires and then straps will come over the, the tops there and you can kind of see how those come out there. So I am going to now, again, take this and we're gonna put it into uh, Fusion 360 one last time. I'm gonna go back and forth a whole bunch of times just to make sure that I get this correct. Um, it's worth taking the time, you know, and it sure takes a lot less time than wasting tubes. Um, so we're gonna name it that one again. Yep, I wanna replace it. Let's go over to Fusion 360 and open it up. All right, so now we're back to that same point again where we have the fuel tank back in there. Let's go ahead and put the tires back in. All right, there you go. I think it looks pretty killer. Uh, that is what it'll look like. You know, I think in the end though, like I've been talking about, the ride height's gonna be slightly higher than this, giving us a little bit more than 16 inches of clearance from the uh, belly of the, the cradle down here. Uh, but that <laughs> it looks pretty trick. It is the way I want it to look. You know, you can kind of see here um, that these tires will be able to move up. They're gonna clear the spares. They're gonna clear everything we've been talking about. There's a little space back here where I will be able to put uh, some kind of a tool storage, you know, it'll be kind of some jacks and some tools and some of the things that we were keeping up here and we'll keep them back here to make them a little bit more accessible. There'll be some space back over here to put like the recovery tracks and all that kind of stuff that goes into the truck with we'll a find somewhere to put the, you know, there's a, a drive shaft and all that. And those things can kind of move around, but these are the big things that really needed to find a home with a structure that would hold them. And I think this is going to be just just awesome. I think it's really look cool. One last thing I wanted to check before we, we move on and see if we're not going to have any problems. I want to put locate where the shocks are going to go. So I'll take a second here and build the structure, which makes up the whole trailing arms and you know the shock location so we can verify that those will fit in there. All right, well, there was a little bit of tinkering you saw there to make these uh, shocks happen. And uh, this is what I do. I just go back and forth trying to figure out how these things are gonna fit in there. But as you can see from the top, um, that these tubes are that they, the shocks will be able to line up in general, because I'll probably take a tube off of right about here, and I'll drop it down to over here somewhere. Um, if you kind of look at it from the side, you know, there'll probably be a tube, you know, some, some kind of structure that comes off of this tube up to this tube such that it holds those. And so that these will eventually kind of maybe lean a little bit to the right to grab those tubes. But in general, you know what I'm shooting for is that as the shock, as the trailing arm travels up and it reaches its limit that they're at a 90 degree angle to these shocks, which is optimum for the shock performance there at the end of their travel. So that's what we'll be going for. There we go. Um, I think that we can kind of wrap up this design. I think it's looking really good. Um, I'm about just about ready to go and take this and cut this. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do one more video. It'll be a shorter video than this one. And I'm gonna show you how I'm basically going to plan out how I'm going to fabricate everything, which will basically dictate how we're gonna cope all of the tubes all the way throughout. Too much to talk about in this video. We'll add it to the next one. Uh, but we'll go ahead and wrap this one up right now. Well, okay, well the pressure is on now to get this thing all finished, get everything nested, 
Into the Dragon software, figure out how much tubes we got to buy. You can imagine with about 100 individual tubes, we got a lot of cutting to do and I got a whole bunch of welding to do once this thing gets back. We're going to get to it. Again, please consider hitting that like and subscribe, ringing the bell for notification of future episodes. And the next time we see you, we'll be at Bentec. I'll see you there. Take care of yourself.